Hi guys, I'm Shane McDermott. I'm here with another Conquest Academy graduate, David Bramang. David now plays up at Coventry. How are you keeping, David? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thank you. How, how are you finding isolation, first of all? Yeah, it's a bit boring, to be honest. There's not much to do except for that train, that go on that run and stuff. And that's it, to be honest. Are you managing to keep fit though? So you say you're going for runs and stuff. Are you still able to do a bit of full work and a bit of other fitness as well? Yeah, I do some runs, yeah. And obviously sometimes I tune into the Conquest's page to like do some of the work. What what have you found? What have you thought of Connor's workouts which he's been putting Harry and Samir through? Uh, yes, right, but says a bit much to be honest. <laughs> Let's take you back back in the day when you were really young. What are your first football memories? Yeah, to be honest, first club I joined was called Spartans, which is not far from where I live. And there, I used to, because obviously my cousin used to come around, so his dad said that I should just come join. So I joined there. I joined there as a left back, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's then, a yeah. issue, isn't it? Because you're an attacking player now. What what made the change? Uh, to be honest, Spartans are playing left back, then sometimes I'll play left mid. And then obviously, then I just like grew into it more, more, then started like playing on the wings. And you joined Conquest at the age of 14. How did that come about? Do you remember that? Uh, to be honest, because I went to school with like loads of boys that played for Conquest in it. And obviously they said to me uh, next year that they was making a team for us. So then they asked if I should join. And then obviously spoke with like, my dad. And then obviously went down, had a free like, training session. And yeah, kind of asked me to sign. What were your first impressions and stuff when you saw the setup? Were you impressed? Uh, yeah, I was impressed to be fair because it was much different to Linux because I was at more training sessions and like, yeah, it was just bad because I knew like most of the people there. How much of an impact of Conquest having you obviously on the pitch with your development but also off it as a person as a whole? Uh, yeah, and it helped me a lot to be fair because obviously I wasn't like the best kids like, off the pitch to be honest. I used to get in like, trouble most of the time like, in school and out of school. So yeah, so kind of that like, helped me like, build myself into to who I am now. And that's a big thing though, isn't it? Because like, you, obviously you're very good at football, but if you weren't a good person, if you hadn't grown into the person which was grounded at Conquest, maybe clubs and stuff, when they looked at you, they might not look at you on footballing reasons, but obviously the way that you developed as a person, that's a big... Um, tick in the box for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's to me, it's, clubs don't just look at your like, football, sometimes they look at your attitude as well. So that's obviously a big part. And you're, you're lucky, obviously, you played in a team with Toby, Michael, Andrew, Mikel, and me, like four of you there are pros, a couple of you are scholars. How much did that spur you on as a player to just have that talent around you? Yeah. It was good to be honest playing with them because obviously I knew there was good players and obviously hopefully um, some of us would get an opportunity and most of us did to be honest. So yeah, I'm happy for all of them. Was it enjoyable playing in a team with so many, um, in respectively, like big names for that sort of standard of football, the way you guys all went on? Uh, yeah, it was to be fair because off the pitch is also like close as well to be honest. And like we used to train a lot, so yeah, it was just good. Is it surreal thinking that you obviously you played at Redleys Park, or I grew up in Isra, so I know exactly what it's like. You played there with those guys, and then you're up at Coventry, Toby at Hearts, Michael at Colchester, a couple of other scholar boys. Is it quite weird when you think back like five, six years ago, you were just kicking the ball in a park with guys who were just very close friends of yours? Yeah, it's weird to me, but obviously. It got to like that point where everyone wanted to like take football serious. So obviously, when the opportunity came, everyone just took it to be honest. I was told there was a little bit of a running joke that you're you're quite quiet, and if you got two words out of out of you in a year, you'd be quite lucky. So you obviously prefer to let your 
the football and goals and stuff like that, do the talking. Yeah, to be honest, I just let it out all on the pitch, to be honest. You, you stepped up in a big way in the under 18s, you were a top scorer. What memories do you sort of have of that season? Are there any games which sort of stick in the mind, any certain goals? Um, there was a few, but there was like one, probably say one in the final, to be honest. Yeah, to like help them win. That was probably one of the main ones. Was that a big moment for you as well? Because I imagine any piece of silverware, medal and stuff is a big thing as a, as a young developing person. Uh, yeah, it kind of was, to be honest, was that, that was probably like one of like the first few trophies that I'd won when I was younger, to be honest. So yeah, obviously it was a big achievement for me to be honest. And then those performances, you got picked up, got signed to Coventry on the back of those. How have you found the step up into the pro ranks? Um, it's much different to this because at the start, I kind of like struggled a bit, like training every day. And obviously, yeah. But then the more I got into it, the more I got used to it, to be honest. So, yeah. What do you think the big differences are from going from grassroots age group football into playing against guys who have seasoned veterans for 10 years on the circuit and stuff? Um, like the tempo is much higher. You've got to be that much fitter. Like, yeah. Because like, when we used to play, it wasn't like, like all slow football to be honest. You know? When you get there, it's like high football, and like you can't make mistakes. I know you've obviously you've had a couple of loan spells. So you had an eventful one at Nadita and a couple of goals and then a red card and then obviously at Leamington. How much have those experiences helped you? They've helped a lot to be honest because it was just going out to get like some experience against like um first team players or like ex or players or whatever. And obviously, yeah, it was just good to get a few games, to be honest. How have you found having to move from, obviously, back home with your family and stuff, going up to Coventry, a new part of the world? I don't know if you've ever been to Birmingham or that part of the world before, but that, to me, seems like a really big step for a lot of you young guys when you do make the jump into the professional game. Yeah, it was different, to be honest, because at the start, it was that, of a struggle because I haven't like really moved away from home to minutes when I was younger. So obviously it's a bit of a struggle because like, at the start I was always used to like come home like every week or whenever I could. Yeah. So I like miss my family to minutes. But like the more you get used to it, the more yeah. So. And I know your your original deal would have been up this summer, but I believe you've had an extension for an extra year. Yeah. Is that so, obviously you're very pleased about that? How how did that feel? Because that shows the club rate you quite highly and see development and stuff there for you a good base. Yeah, it was good to be fair. Cause that that first year I learned a lot to be honest, and yeah, obviously it, all of the work just paid off. So just got to keep doing what I was doing. Some people could get quite complacent being a young player signing a contract, earning X amount a week. Um, and you can, get, you can get quite complacent and you could see it as you've made it. But from what I find with a lot of the Congress guys, you're really hungry and determined to push on and not let it slip through your fingers. Yeah, because obviously when I signed, obviously first thing Connor said to me that oh, just because like, now you've made it, it doesn't mean like, you can like, slack off and do this. You still got all that card, you still got to train properly. And obviously, you just got to try and stay where you are for as long as possible, to be honest. Is that the way you see it as well, that mindset that you don't just want this to be the be all and end or you want it to be a stepping stone to progress your career? Yeah, obviously, because you don't want to like, drop back down to this. Because you just want to like, stay and try to progress as high as you can. So we'll just finish off with a quick fast five. I'll ask you a couple of questions and you just give the first answer that comes to your mind. So the first yeah. one, what's your favourite cheat meal? Yeah. And we got to say nine this to win it. Oh, that's a great show. How hot do you go? Uh, I go hot or sometimes extra hot. Who's the best player you've played with? 
Um, probably say Jordi Rilla. Oh, yeah, class player. Um, who's your football inspiration and why? Um, probably got to say Messi because that some of the things he like, does is just different. If you weren't a footballer, what would you be? Uh, not really too sure. If they made a film about your life, which actor would you like to play the role of yourself? Um, probably Dwayne Johnson. Oh, what a legend. David, brilliant. Thanks for, thanks for coming on with us. Um, we obviously wish you well for the rest of your career and the Conquest boys obviously keeping a keen eye on you. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Thank you for having me.